We rank in the episodes yet? Well, I got a feeling we're about to. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Fog Entertainment. Yes, that is cries, that is tears. Hell, you're all going to be doing that. Because there only really was one good episode. It was Negan. Here's Negan, episode 16. Yes, spoiler alert, that might be near the top. But we have to start in 16th place and that is the scary thing about when you do Walking Dead episodes because there are 16 episode seasons usually TV shows are 13 or 10 things like that now there is a few examples throughout the world like Sopranos final season 22 episodes Prison Breaks first season 24 episodes I mean Lost is 24 episodes as well so with the, I guess with The Walking Dead it's like in the, I say it's in the medium range, it's probably in the high range considering the average based off TV shows. But you know what? Let's jump in the same boat. Let's paddle our way to shore and talk about 16th place, which was the same boat. Woke, feminist shit between Carol and Maggie, man. Just demonising men. I mean, a full women group for the saviours, and then when we see them in the finale, there's not one woman between them all. Explain. Yeah, it was like they just had a female group here just so they could get give Maggie and Carol and the females the centre of attention. Yep. Uh, the episode ends with Rick killing Primo. Wasn't quite epic though. Right, here we go. Episode 5 in 15th place with another 3 out of 10. Now, if you remember this episode, Maggie tells Aaron she's pregnant to try and use the tunnels under Alexandria to try and get the Glen. Almost dies. Rick returns to Alexandria as well. Denise is doing absolutely nothing. Just Rick fill her. Feller. Yep, Feller. That, I mean, that's episode five. Me, instead of being called now, it could have been called Polyfiller. Then we've got episode 15 and 14th place. This one is called East. It got a four. Things went south. Not quite west, isn't it? Not? <laughs> no, it's not. It went very, very south. Just an, another poor episode, in, in my opinion. Uh, Carol eliminates, I mean, a group of saviors on her own. Like, what, what, what are we doing here? I mean, it's... Five, five, five men, and she just eliminated them like they were nothing. Yeah, took them out. Ridiculous. Like it was like they were the garbage, and it was just it was collection day the next day. Yeah, I mean you had Dwight capturing Daryl and Cohen shooting him. Well, I mean I guess for I mean it did twelve point one three in the ratings, which is pretty good. Um, episode six comes in the thirteenth spot with another four out of ten. Always accountable. If you remember this episode, it was Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham. They met Dwight. It was shite. Yeah, I just didn't really care for Dwight, Sherry, and the other woman that was with them. Uh, you, Sasha and Abraham getting closer. Abraham trying on new clothes. Abraham also, um, you know, managed to obtain some rocket launchers as well. Was I mean, he wearing a green suit? He may have been. Aye, he oh, was. That's very good then. I like, yeah, I like Abraham wearing a green suit. Uh, up next, we've got episode 8, start to finish. I mean, I guess you could say the, the prologue to uh, No Way Out. This episode for me was absolute shite, though, because the wall came down. You know, you've got Carl arguing with Jesse's son. Jesse's girl. It was just pish. And then, like, you know, Diana's bit and she's just lying there. Did nothing for me. 4 out of 10. Uh, up next, we've got episode 7 and 11th place. We're another 4 out of 10. This one is called Heads Up. You've got Enid saving Glenn and then acting like a little bitch like oh I don't want to do this Glenn why am I coming back to Alexandria Glenn I've got, I've got fucking green balloons Glenn go and snort a balloon man then the tar falls at I'm the just end. Not, I'm just not a fan of Enid just a, an annoying sour faced bitch really just in there to, I don't know what she's in there for uh, to, to be a love interest for Coral but um, I mean at this point I, I just don't care I, I honestly don't in that episode where she got like the lead in What's, what were they doing? Yeah. Uh, Temp Spot belongs to episode one. First time again, 4.5 out of 10. Uh, it actually drew 14.63 million viewers. We had flashbacks, current, all that shite, different filters. This episode sucked to me. Well, let's introduce a guy that used to build the walls with Edge, but we've never seen him before, which makes no sense, by the way. Yeah, I mean, what? where was this guy in season five? We didn't, it... we didn't see him. Uh, I mean, it was just filler. It was just simply an excuse to get, like, Thousands and thousands of walkers on screen. Wow. Look, there's CGI walkers. There's loads of them. And, and people are going to mark out and pretend it's like the greatest episode they've ever seen because there's a lot of walkers in the background. Is that really... Is that how low the standards are? See, Alexandria, right? It's a big community, but it's not like, you know, Tokyo with 18 million people in it. 
there's no fucking reason why this guy wasn't introduced in season five. Episode four is on next in ninth place. We got here's not here. It's Morgan's flashback episode four point five out of ten. I mean, it wasn't actually that bad. I'll be honest. Uh, no, I mean, I, I did like this. I thought Eastman was a good character. Still don't like Morgan. He pisses me off, and it's not fair that Eastman had to die because Morgan's an arsehole, but sometimes that's what happens in The Walking Dead. The good guys die, and the arseholes live. That is it. Up next, we got episode 11 in 8th spot with a 5 out of 10. Knots untied. They go to the hilltop. We meet Gregory. It was fine. Episode 2 up next, JSS. A lot of people absolutely get hard-ons for this episode. Oh, Carol, she's drawing W's on her head and, and Morgan's... Oh, he's conflicted. He doesn't want to do it, but she wants to do it. Just survive somehow. Aye, that should be the motto of the fucking episode. Just, just survive. Just survive it to the end. Close your eyes and it'll be over in 45 minutes. But if you close your eyes... I got a 5 out of 10. Up next in 6th spot, we've got the next world. This... this you know why this episode came about? i seen on TikTok earlier. Norman Reedus and Andrew Lincoln went to... Fucking whoever, Scott Gimple, I don't even know who's in charge at this point, and said, we want an episode where it's just me and him doing like a buddy cop routine. And that's what we got. But it, to me, that's when a show is going downhill. See when two of the actors can just say, dictate what they want and then they go out of their way to dedicate an entire episode to just please the act. The actor should be told the script, the story, and that's the direction you're going. Yeah. But The Walking Dead at this point, it's just had so many throwaway episodes. It's like, why not give them it just to keep them happy? Yeah, no, I get it, right? It's not to Diddy Men. It's Rick and Daryl. I mean, we're not exactly wanting, you know, Montez and West here to get a full fucking episode in Sons of Anarchy. We're not exactly going to get Badger and uh, Skinny Pete getting a full fucking episode in Breaking Bad. But to me, it's still a bit weird. But uh, the episode itself, we meet Jesus. I mean, it, it ticks a few boxes, but I'm not going to pretend it's fucking brilliant. Up next, though... Um, I, mean, I mean, it was... I, I thought Jesus is probably the best new character we've seen in a while. Yeah. And it's not necessarily because he was great. It was just... He just... He felt like a character that we're actually trying to make a little bit likeable. And it was... I guess it was a bit of a funny episode or whatever. It wasn't great, but it was... Episode 14 up next, uh, fifth spot, got a five, uh, Denise died, uh, and Eugene put some cock. Yeah, I mean, th this one, I, I don't think the episode was that great, but the whole scene where they get confronted by the saviors, and um, Eugene bites off more than he can chew, and Denise gets an arrow to the eye instead of the knee, I mean, it was a pretty cool wee scene and stuff like that, but, I mean, overall, the episode was basically Denise talking about her dead brother, and going out on a, a hunt and trying to get soda for Tara. It was like... I mean, it kind of really was filler up to that last kind of moment where shit went down. Although for me, the standout was really Abraham and Eugene. With Eugene telling Abraham, I don't need you anymore. And them going their separate ways. Don't know what, where Eugene found the balls to, uh, you know, <laughs> treat Abraham and talk to Abraham like that. But that was my favourite part of this episode. Yeah, I thought that was my favourite part as well. But again, it's like we're in fifth spot here. And it's a Walking Dead episode with a 5 out of 10. Well, I, I do believe this is a very poor season. And, I mean, people can say where The Walking Dead, um, you know, fell off. I think The Walking Dead fell off before season 6. But I can at least say that I still had an interest in The Walking Dead up to season 6. I, I think season 6 really was a poor season and pretty much put the nail in the coffin. People want to blame Negan, man. If anything, Negan revitalised it for a little bit. Bring me the life. Yeah, up next we've got season, well, season six, obviously, episode nine. We've got No Way Out, got a five out of ten. People love this episode. If you want to hear us go into more detail about this episode, check out the review. But pretty much when you've just got a bunch of no-names jobbers that have had no interactions with walkers turn into fucking prime Steven Seagal and Arnold Schwarzenegger, I've got a problem with it. I mean, I thought the first 15 minutes was good and had it kept that kind of... You know what? No, 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 this kind of felt like to me. It, it kind of reminded me a lot of No Sanctuary. Now, I don't think it was as good as No Sanctuary. No, it was nowhere near. But it kind of reminded me of No Sanctuary in the way that I really enjoyed like the opening 15 minutes, the opening 10, 15 minutes. Then I think it kind of just fell off. Yeah. And for me, that's well, what happened. For me, No Sanctuary was a 10 for like the first 15 minutes. That's it. Oh, no, I, I, uh, no I, I agree. No Sanctuary, I thought, was fantastic for the, the opening of it. 
And I'm not saying Norway had the same. I don't think. I don't think the beginning of Norway was the same quality as the beginning of No Sanctuary. But I just think it was similar in terms of you know it started really good and then it, it just kind of died off. I mean, I liked the beginning, but once um you know once the the family got deferred and Rick took Carol and uh, Coral into the house and see when he took the machete and went outside, that was pretty much the episode just went downhill because then you just got a bunch of no like a bunch of fatties like who's that fat fuck that looks after the the food and i don't know why they put her in charge of the food by the way what a horrible decision that is but it's just a bunch of no names right that have never been outside of alexandria that have never actually uh had to get physical or had to get blood on them and then all of a sudden they all feel comfortable going out with weapons to help rick and they all beat down the salt and none of them get bit not like, this would have been a good way, I think, to kill off a couple of minor, you know, Alexandria characters that you don't care about. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I or even kill off a couple of characters that didn't even exist like, up until... you literally <laughs> seen, like, in the episode prior to it, Eugene was cowering and he stuck both his hands up to protect his face from a walker that was coming close to him. And then, like, ten minutes later, he, he's commando. It's fucking... He's Rambo. You know, it's ridiculous, man. And... You know what? See if, you, see if you think that No Way Out is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you don't have a high intelligence for me. To me, it's just fucking... It's actually insulting your intelligence. I think the, only, the, I think the only way you can really enjoy No Way Out is if you just to get excited about the sheer number of zombies and the sheer number of zombie kills. If having a bunch of no-name people with uh, sharp weapons kill zombies is what makes a great episode for you, then you'll probably love this. But if if you require more than that to, you know, to give an episode like a high rating, then you'll probably go look. Just compare the difference. So, right, episode four, season one, when the walkers attack the camp, right? Shane and a few other guys are, you know, they've got their guns and there's like a few pickaxes. See all the people that have not dealt in combat? They're yeah, car and they're hiding. They're, 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 you know, you've got like 20 people are in Shane. So why in this episode? No, it was some of the fucking cringe, fat fuck looking after the food running down the steps, man. Like, was a fucking Uber Eats delivery on the doorstep? Even back then, though, man, even even the fighters, that group, like, they, they didn't really feel comfortable close to close, uh, I don't think. Yeah, and before anyone goes, this is season six. No, nah, the whole gimmick that they've been trying to hit home with Alexandria. Yeah, this they're, group's never been outside. They've never experienced it. So so this, the, Alexandria are a season one group. They've never had to do anything. And we're not talking about 10 walkers here. We are talking about, I mean, about 30,000. And we're not talking about, like, season one Shanes. We're talking, like, season one fucking Carols. Useless Aye. fucks. Anyway, let's move into episode 12, which was third spot, not tomorrow yet. Uh, they attacked the Saviour Compound. Fun episode, a lot of deaths, a lot of blood. Um, Tara and Heath, the partner supplier on 7 out of 10. Thoughts on that, bad boy? Tara and Keith. I tap Keith. Keith. Keith, Tara, Keith. Right, anyway, up next we've got episode. What, what are your thoughts on it? I've already given my thoughts on it. Give me give them again. Give my thoughts again on it? Well, I mean, the episode was fine. I mean, I think it's the beginning and the end of Rick's group. Like, I mean, you can't just kill 30 people and think you're, you're getting away with it for the sake of some fucking food. No, you can't. But you know what? I like Keith. It's a shame that he never got more screen time. I'm glad that was your takeaway from it. Uh, episode 3 comes in in second spot. 7 out of 10. Thank you. The dumpster episode. 7 might be too harsh for that episode. You know, I look back. I think I, I think I deserved a higher rating. I, I think thank you was good. I, I actually really enjoyed Nicholas and Glenn and uh, their chemistry as a duo. Um, I, I think that they certainly could have kept Nicholas alive longer. Um... <sighs> Could we maybe have seen Nicholas take the, the shot instead of Glenn? Probably not. I mean, that would have had the same impact. But I, I think that we could have dragged this out a bit more. I think that Nicholas could have... I would have liked to have seen Nicholas sacrifice his life for Glenn. Because in my opinion, it sort of seemed like Nicholas was rebuilding trust and he was redeeming himself. And in the end, he, he still kind of took the cowards with it and fucked Glenn over in a way. Yeah, because no, once he shot himself, I mean, he, he did kind of like fall into Glenn and, and I mean, could have got Glenn killed. 
No, he could have got Glenn killed, but... It's not like he says thank you and jumped in and allowed Glenn time to... Like sacrificed himself like Kenny. Yeah. In the Walking Dead game or so, something. So, um, as much as I did like the, the mini redemption from Nicholas in the end, it was kind of like he fucked Glenn over again. Yeah, but number one spot belongs to Negan. Last day on Earth, 9 out of 10, no complaints. Uh, yeah, just this, this episode really, I mean, it really did feel chilling. I, I don't think The Walking Dead's had an episode like this before. You see the, Rick's entire group, they've been caught, and you know they're, they're laid out, it's it's night time. See, for me, though, it's actually sad, because it's like, it just showed you that The Walking Dead still could be great. You know, I mean, it has the potential. Yeah, I mean, it has, but unfortunately it's woke and it's full of shit characters, so it's not going to be, but, um, you know, this this episode was good, very good, and, and you know, ne- Negan's what this show needed, because it was going downhill big time. So. Yeah, I think the problem for me is why season seven and eight don't work is because you've got, like, what, 32 episodes? Rick, across the 32 episodes, is probably in, like, what, 20? And that could be t- that could be generous. Like, for me... You know, you, you you look at like season three, man, the governor Rick, like they were in every episode. And to me that's what makes it when 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 the actors are taking like four episodes off him. I think Rick from episode one, he doesn't appear till like episode five of season seven, and that's too long, man. Yeah, I mean you name all the great shows. You think of the think of the Sopranos if you didn't see Tony for wow. four episodes. That is it, like. Think of Breaking Bad if you've never seen Walter for four no, episodes. I remember, see what, Sons of Anarchy without Jax. See all these great shows. You, you don't get that. No, see, but seeing Sons of Anarchy, you even notice it when a, a member misses a couple of episodes. The, the, the table feels empty. So what the hell, what's it going to feel like when Rick misses... Oh, come on, man. Anyway, guys, that is every episode ranked. Um, I mean, the average rating... Well, you know what? I see, did not bother working out. See, see, uh, see if you're being honest. See if you actually look at it. Though you could argue that's when The Walking Dead really started to go downhill. See in season four when people were missing like clumps of episodes. Yeah. Do you not think so? No, I totally agree. See in that second half when it was like kind of all just all mixed up. Like I mean, you could maybe argue that's when the um the series truly began to nosedive. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any coincidence about that, but. I mean, look, season six, for me, it's the worst season so far by, I mean, I want to say a large distance. I mean, is it so much worse than season five? I'm not too sure. I think the beginning of season five, I think season five up until they got to Alexandria was pretty decent, to be fair. Unfortunately, I think once they got to Alexandria, it sucked. Yeah, uh, I mean, the average rate, rate, and I've just worked out there, uh, 4.75. That's poor. That is really, really poor. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's Alexandria. Yeah, no, as to me, yeah, I agree. And I'll tell you what, if you went across our Walking Dead seasons, you would just see a big decline each season. Well, like that, season 7 will be below that. Yeah, our two, our two favourite episodes for season 6 were episodes that pretty much featured outside of Alexandria. Yeah. The finale, and thank you. And I don't even know when they leave Alexandria, right? But I'm pretty sure it's not till like, season 11. Yeah, um... I just don't think in a zombie apocalypse show you should be spending more than half the show at one location. Especially a safe location like that. You know, you, you look back at season two and three, right? I, I think they were almost outstaying their welcome at the prison and the farm. People, I know, it's weird. People complain about the farm big time. People complain a lot more about the farm than the prison. Yet, they, uh, they love... They love Alexandra. Anyway, we don't love Alexandra. <laughs> Till next time, guys. That's every episode ranked. Peace. Why is there more Huns in the chat?